The indirect benefits of YouTube are insane. A lot of people talk about, oh, this guy made 108K in 82 days from YouTube. Or a lot of people talk about, hey, this guy got a thousand opt-ins or this guy made a million from YouTube. But what people don't understand is there's indirect benefits to doing YouTube. And arguably, they're actually much bigger than the direct ones. For every dollar you make directly from YouTube, there's probably $10 that was created indirectly. And what I mean by indirect revenue from YouTube is that you can't really track that it came from YouTube. Let's say maybe someone watched your video on YouTube and then they booked a call through Twitter. Or maybe they found you on Instagram, they looked you up on YouTube, they saw your LinkedIn, they booked through LinkedIn. You can't track that viewer came from YouTube. But what you need to understand in 2023 and going into 2024 is that people are skeptical right now. They are searching you up. They don't work with you unless they search you up or they know you're credible, you have case studies, etc. The best way to portray those things and win back people's trust is by making YouTube videos that show your expertise, show your accomplishments, and show who you are as a person. And by doing so, yes, you will generate direct revenue, but you're also going to generate indirect revenue. Number one, you're gonna become top of mind in people's brain. Let's say you're watching one of our clients, Dakota Robertson. You know, you're a beginner, you wanna start ghostwriting. Maybe you don't even have any money. Like you have zero dollars in your bank account. You just got your first job at McDonald's. Now you start watching this guy, Dakota. He's cool. You watch like 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours, which is a lot of content. All of a sudden you have X amount of money to spend that you need to work with Dakota or join his program. You join it. But maybe when you joined it, you might've just like Googled Dakota and went to his Twitter and booked through his Twitter since he's big over there. But really, YouTube nurtured you for months so that you could save up X amount of money. YouTube helps you take up mental bandwidth from people. And also people's time is limited, right? Your own time is limited. Other people's time is limited. By making a piece of content, you're taking up a percentage of a person's day. They only have a certain percentage of time that they can consume content because they're busy. They're hanging out with family, working, eating, sleeping. So let's say someone has a four hour window of content consumption per day on average, and you take up one hour of that, which means they had four hours of time and they spent one hour consuming your content, you basically took up 25% of their day, kind of. Obviously you didn't take up four hours, 10 hours. You took up an hour out of four hours, which is 25% of their free time. They're spending those last few hours of free time with you. So they're taking in what you're saying and just getting brainwashed into buying your service and also just trusting you as a person. They're learning who you are, they're learning what you do, what type of accomplishments do you have. Just by watching your content, they're spending their valuable hour with you. That's like a thousand bucks, 2,500 bucks, depending on the echelon of the type of people that you target. You need 100 hours of yourself up on YouTube and I am not actively there. I'm working towards it though. As soon as you have that much content out on YouTube, you're just gonna be getting passive views through SEO and also through profile visits and people searching you up to the point where you're just gonna start getting inbound leads directly from YouTube. You're also gonna get all those indirect benefits, which I mentioned before, which once again are probably higher than the direct ones in the first place. Let's talk about Myron Golden. He's doing something like 10 mil a month right now. No paid ads, nothing like that. He's just posting on YouTube. YouTube. Sure, a good amount is gonna be direct from YouTube. A lot of it is, hey, this Myron Golden guy, you know, he's good at this, he's good at that. Let's search him up. Let's see, maybe they book through Instagram. All I know is he's doing organic and he gets a lot of stuff from YouTube. Like, you need to be more like Myron Golden. He uploads consistently, right? It's not, oh, one week and a half he doesn't post, or two weeks he doesn't post, etc. I know I sound like a bit of a hypocrite right now because I haven't posted in a week and a half at the time of recording. You just need to post more, okay? You need to be more like Myron Golden. You need to be more like Sam Evans, who used to post a lot. You just need content out on the internet. Look at Iman Gadz. He's been posting content since 2016, 2015, nobody can say, you know, you're a liar or I don't trust you. They've seen his come up. They've seen like when he was a teenager with acne on his face and going to the, the bookstore, buying books. And now they see him in Dubai, like with all these cars, they see the come up. They know you, they trust you and they like you because they resonate with you. You know, they want your life. So that's how Eman is printing a lot of money from YouTube. There's one of his VSLs on YouTube. He's got 2 million views, other one like 7 million views. He's literally just selling people on his service. These people trust him at that point where like they, they got down to the bottom of the YouTube sales funnel and they watch that VSL, they already like this person. They already are probably gonna buy from them anyways. And we just accelerate that by making them buy after watching that YouTube video. Maybe they won't even click the link in the description though. Maybe they're gonna think on it for a week and then they're gonna be like, oh, I watched that YouTube video from Iman. It was so good, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna search you up and buy from you. So it's indirect revenue and direct. Another benefit of making content that is not related to money is that it actually builds up connections. Just by posting on Instagram, which is separate from YouTube, I've just gotten connections from posting. Same thing through YouTube. I get DMs, people are like, hey, yeah, I just found your YouTube video. I was looking for this. I found it, man, it was so good. Maybe this dude, like he has a client, he can refer to me. Or maybe I can refer someone to him. I'm just getting mutually beneficial relationships from people that, you know, they're not like noobs or something. Like they're actually people like I would want to talk to. Overall, posting content is just amazing. There's no downside to posting content. The only thing that's bad about posting content is that it does take time to work because when you start recording, you're gonna be bad and you also need consistency over time for it to work. If you stick with making content,
content for a long period of time, your come up is going to be undeniable. People are just going to look back, see, oh, this guy's been posting about YouTube scripts and videos and edits for like three years. Like who's going to debate that I know what I'm talking about? I've been doing this for three years. If I was posting three years straight, you just need more content and there's no downside to it. Yes, it costs your time. That time would have disappeared. But now that you spend that time recording, now that hour lives forever and gets watched thousands and tens of thousands of times. So you're really multiplying your time through content and content is the only way you can multiply your time. So if you want to leave behind a legacy and you also want to nurture people, get direct sales from YouTube, use content for networking. And really just overall, if you want to make more money, you want something big in life, or maybe you even want something small, you should post content. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. That's it. Peace.